Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys checking today's video out and spending some time with me today. I always really appreciate that. And guys, today we're gonna dive into the topic of color. I really wanna get into lure color, um, sort of have a deep dive into the variations and why certain colors are better at certain times because I think there's a lot of myths surrounding lure color and we've touched upon this a little bit in some of the past videos, but sort of want to give you guys a fresh perspective on this in, in today's episode. Um, I hope you guys, I've you know, sort of changed the format here on advanced bass fishing. I sort of just, I, th I thought it would be good, guys, just to be able just for me to sit down. Like if you got, you and I were hanging out together in the living room, just talking fishing. I think that um, these one-on-one -on -one conversations like this that you can listen to while you're driving to work or something like that will really benefit you because you don't really have to watch the video to see it. You can just listen to it. And it really gives me a chance to, to share a lot of uh, really good fishing information. I'm also, guys, real quick for get started here, if you do like the content on advanced bass fishing and you want to give something back and help out, the best way you can do that is just go to the links I put in the description and use and bookmark my Tackle Warehouse link for your tackle purchases. Um, by doing that, if you guys order anything off that site there, the channel gets a small percentage of the commission. That's a really good way to give back to the channel, so really appreciate that. Okay, color, I think there's one of the things about color, when you read a lot of stuff about bass fishing or a lot of people learn, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, common trains of thought that you like, you need to use bright colors in dirty water and natural looking colors in clear water and sort of that type of thing. And there's some truth to that, but there's a lot more that goes into that. Because one of the things that I have found out about colors, now this is, this is sort of one of the things, another reason why bass fishing is the most difficult sport in the world, is that um, there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of it. And I know that's not a, that's not a satisfying answer, but really there's not. It's like the, the best color is the one that the bass want that particular day you're out on the water. And a lot of it doesn't make any sense. The guys, I have, I can't tell you how many times I've been fishing where somebody with me will try a color that I will just think there's no way in the world they're going to bite that and they wind up catching fish on it. So ultimately the thing, um, you have to have some foundation to begin with, which we're going to start, which, that's what the topic today is. But ultimately one of the things I want to stress here is that you have to experiment with color and you have to really try different stuff based upon, you know, a sort of a systematic approach to figuring out the best color and be open-minded about it. You really, you have to be open-minded or if you're not, you're never going to like get up to that next level in fishing. But one of the things, the, the goal I wanted to do in today's video is I want to give you guys a starting point because you have to, when you go to the lake for the first time, you got to have something tied on you gotta, and you got to have an idea a little bit about the best color you want to throw. So we're going to get into that. That's sort of the point of the video here. <clears throat> so <clears throat> a couple of different factors with this. Color has a lot to do with, um, the, or the best color, it has a lot to do with, <clears throat> excuse me, the water visibility that you have, which I think that's a given. It also has to do with the light intensity as far as the intensity of the, how bright it is out, if it's cloudy or sunny or whatever. Like today, for example, guys, I don't know if you can see it, but it's cloudy here but it's still bright. It's like it's the, the light intensity is bright because the cloud cover is, is pretty, it, the cloud cover is thin. It's not like a real thick cloud cover. So you can have a cloudy day and it can be bright like it is right now on a cloudy day, or you can have those really dark cloudy days where like it's almost on the verge of raining or it is raining and your light levels are considerably lower. And it's the same on a sunny day. You can have a sunny day and the atmosphere may be really crisp and clear and it's super bright, or you may have a sunny day and there's like a little bit of haze in the atmosphere and it's not quite as bright even though it's sunny. So a lot of different factors that go with that. So here's sort of a guideline what I wanna start out with. Let's, let's first of all, we're gonna talk a little bit about the water clarity in correlation with the water temperature and the species of bass that you're fishing with. Now, there is an underlying truth to the fact that if you're fishing stained water, like water visibility of under two feet, or, or maybe even under a foot and a half, dirtier water, the brighter colors usually work better. Like your black back, chartreuse side, you know, those type of brighter colors, perch patterns, something like that. Um, but there are exceptions to that rule. One exception to that, it's like most of the time that is gonna be the, 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 the choice. But also what happens, I found out is 
if you have that dirty water, there's, there's a correlation that goes with the water um, temperature along with that. So say for example, if you have dirty water, you say you've got a foot and a half of visibility. Now, if the water temperature is cold and it's bright out, say for example, it's real sunny and that water temperature is 50 degrees, a lot of times in that situation, instead of like a blackback chartreuse sided crankbait, they like a shad pattern for whatever reason. It's like there's something about a shad pattern that will attract strikes in dirtier, colder water that uh, you, where you have a bright day out there. And when I'm talking about a shad pattern, I'm talking about a brighter shad pattern because something like a you know a white side or a pearl side, all shad patterns are, are, are not created equal because sh some shad patterns are translucent and some have like a, a flat finish on it which stands out a lo little bit more. So that's one you know difference with that. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, um, if you have real clear water, a lot of times people think like a bright crankbait's not gonna work pretty, very good, but that's not the case because you can take a bright crankbait, like a chartreuse sided crankbait, and you can speed crank it in clear water sometimes and catch a lot of spotted bass and smallmouth bass if the water temperature is cold with that. So th these are things that I've sort of found out that there's a lot of different exceptions to the rule. So given that, the, the point of why I want to talk about that is just stay open-minded with it. And if the best way, here's the best way to do it. It's like if you, if you go down a bank and you catch a couple fish and you know there's some fish on that bank, doesn't matter what you're throwing out there, come down that bank the next time with a different lure color, whether it be a different color jig or plastic worm or jerk bait or whatever. Just try a different lure color because a lot of times changing up that color will you know, generate more strikes than anything else once you key in, key in on that particular color. But in general, the main thing that I usually start out with is like I said, if the water is dirty, I'm gonna to go to some type of either a bright pearl or white or chartreuse. And as that water clarity gradually clears up, I am going to maybe stay with some of those same type of patterns, but I go with a different finish. Because let's say for example, um, if I was using a flat sided or matte finish, like a solid color, uh, you know, shad pattern crankbait, where it's a bright pearl, um, I may, if the water clears up a little bit, I may stay with that shad pattern, but I go to a more of a translucent finish, like more of a see-through type shad crankbait. And that's gonna keep generating the strikes for me. Um, and then for example, say for example, I'm fishing that clear water and I've been using the translucent looking crankbait and then all of a sudden it starts raining and it gets real dark, I may go back to the brighter color. It's all, all about light intensity that goes with that. Um, another thing that you're gonna find out about color, this is sort of just a wide ranging topic, your brighter colors are normally gonna catch your bigger fish. They may not be the best colors to catch the most fish, but they usually catch the bigger fish. That's why, you know, if I can get the fish to bite like a black and chartreuse jig, it's usually a bigger fish. Same with like a creature bait, like a black with chartreuse tail creature bait, usually bigger fish. You know, chartreuse spinner bait, usually bigger fish or a black back chartreuse crankbait, usually a bigger fish, or a fire tiger jerkbait, bigger fish. And the reason this, it's an aggressive color, and the bass, uh, the, a lot of times those bigger fish are gonna be the ones that are triggered by that bright, aggressive color, but you're not gonna get as many strikes. You're gonna get more strikes on a more, a more subdued color. For example, if you use like a watermelon or green pumpkin shaky head worm, you're gonna get more bites on that in clear water than you would with a black worm or June bug colored. Normally, your dark colors do not get as many bites, but they get a little bit bigger bites than the natural colors. So that's one of the th another good thing to remember with that. Um, also, a couple different things with the species of fish out there. The one thing I found out about, um, smallmouth and, excuse me, smallmouth and spotted bass a lot of times like those a little bit more aggressive colors. So. If I'm fishing a jerk bait or a jig or crank bait or something like that, a lot of times I will use a, a lure that has a little bit brighter color than with a large mouth. I have found that large mouth a lot of times like those little bit more subdued colors in a lot of different situations. Um, and a lot of it just depends on the lure category too because you've got your hard moving baits like your crank baits and your jerk baits and your top waters and then you've got your other baits that are skirted like your jigs, your chatter baits and your spinner baits. And a lot of times the color also can have a lot to do with how the color is mixed. 
because when you have skirts on a jig or a spinner bay, you have the option of creating a certain color and then you have an option of creating a, a, a secondary color, like a complementary color with that, like a black and blue jig or a brown and orange jig or you know a crankbait that's got a black back, pearl side, orange belly. And a lot of times those color variations are key too. And those color variations can change with time of the year. You'll find out in general, like in the spring time of the year, bass prefer a lot of reds or oranges and they don't work so good any, any rest of the time of year. You can catch a few on them, but not that as many, but you know, when that water temperature is like 45 to 60, you know, your, your oranges and your reds can be pretty much pr pretty productive. After that water temperature gets over 60 degrees, you're going to find a lot more of a transition to the shad or the perch colors. Now, if any time that you're using a pearl or white colored crankbait, you're resembling a shad. And any time that you're using a chartreuse crankbait, you're resembling a perch. Because bluegills and, you know, red ear sunfish and pumpkin seeds, they have a lot of orange and chartreuse yellow on them. So that's another thing to remember that normally in the warmer weather months, those fish feed a lot more on shad and perch. And in the colder weather months, I think they feed a lot more on crawdads. So that's why, you know, that's really good with it. But that's just sort of a brief overview. It's sort of like, you know, it's all over the place as far as what that is. But that's the thing about it. When you're talking about lure color, that's a conversation that is literally all over the place. That's why you have to have a wide variety of colors. You know, if you're fishing soft baits, you need green pumpkins, you need watermelons, you need green pumpkins with different type of flakes, you need blacks, you need red bugs, you need June bugs <clears throat> to be able to match the changing skylight conditions, the light intensity conditions, and the water clarity conditions, and the same with your hard baits. Um, baits that are visual oriented lures, like a jerk bait, for example. Jerk bait is a visual lure. Um, the bass strike a jerk bait a lot of times because of the look of it. So anytime that you're dealing with a bait that the fish get a really good look at, where they, they're studying that bait, color becomes even more important. That's why your slow baits, color's really important. Color's important on a jerk bait but color is not quite as important on a fast moving bait. Even though it is important, it's not quite as much. That's why your fast moving baits, like your lipless crankbaits and your regular crankbaits and stuff that you move through the water column fast, the spinner bait, um, it's not quite as critical as with the slower baits. So um, a lot of times it's just a mystery what causes those fish to hit it. I'll, let me give you guys one final example here before we wrap it up. But um, I, I told this story on my other channel one time, but it's a really good story to relate what I'm talking about. I was fishing a tournament down at the Harris Chain of Lakes in Florida several years ago, and I was walking through into the lake called Lake Griffin. And the place that I was fishing the Lake Griffin, water was really dirty. It only had like that much water visibility. And I was flipping a June bug colored creature bait into the lily pads. And even the June bug color, which was a pretty dark color, you know, I only, I could, I lost sight of it when it got that far down. And we were, I was going over there that first morning of the tournament and my partner had a watermelon trick worm on. And when you put that watermelon trick worm in the water, it disappeared instantly. It's like you couldn't, there was no contrast to it. And I, I'm like thinking to myself, that guy's never going to get a bite, you know, on a watermelon worm in this muddy water because he was flipping that in the pads. Guys, he caught a limit of fish before I had a bite on that watermelon worm in that dirty water. So that's just a prime example that never, never get locked into one specific, you know, train of thought. You know, experiment, stay open-minded, and that's always the best way to do on color. So hope it helps out. We'll talk later.